Yermin Davids is the founding pastor of Global Impact Church, a non-denominational church focused on pragmatic human transformation, a firm believer in the potential for greatness in line with the Abrahamic Covenant. Pastor Yermin's teachings focus on guiding individuals to find and unleash their greatness in God. Pastor Yermin is also the convener of Big Great Conference and Richard Conference, a highly sought-after speaker with a strong desire to see people fulfill their potentials. He has a passion for leadership and hosts the MLF Leaders Forum, an interactive and mentoring program which attracts leaders from various spheres of the world. He is the author of Achieve Greatness, Daily Devotional, and several books including The Blessings of Overflow, Seven Laws of Favor, In Pursuit of Academic Excellence, amongst many others. He co-pastors at Global Impact Church with his wife, Abimbola Davids, and they have four beautiful daughters. Welcome. Pastor Yemin Davids to MLF 20. Once again, we welcome everybody joining us for MLF 2023. Let's put our hands together some more for Jesus. Um, and for our online audience, once again, uh, we, we find that you're there. We know you are there, and you're also um, welcome. Uh, this is the first session setting the pace for what God will be doing today and tomorrow. Several years ago, while on campus, the Lord began to deal with me about leadership development, that I should start raising leaders. You know, I was a campus pastor, and I started training people. I didn't even know I was going to start a church in Lagos then. So we used to have leadership development program, you know, LTP, in very intense. And then when God asked that we start our church in Lagos at that time, it was the crop of the leaders, part of them, that uh, we started with. And looking back, I just want to celebrate God for you know, giving me that instruction because that helped uh, when the church was starting. I realized that when you raise a leader, you're, you're, you're raising a new generation. And over the years, we've invested in leadership development a whole lot. I said in our midweek service yesterday that leadership is either a blessing or a curse. In fact, it is a disaster to stay under a non-growing leader. The, the painful principle about leadership is where we are today in our homes, organizations is a function of the leadership provided. Uh, it's, the disciple is not above his master. It's hard for the church, for the business, for the family, to do beyond the leadership. That is the critical thing about leadership. Uh, you are the lead, L-I-D, like the lead on a, on, a, on a pot, okay? So when the leader gets better, I, I used to, um, this, I used uh, this illustration a whole lot, if a leader is on level seven, the team, the family can't go beyond level seven. Scripture says it's enough for a leader, so for a disciple to be as his leader as the master. So the best they can get is to level seven. So we are saying that if you're on level seven, move to level 7.1 at least, 7.5, 7.8, and then eight. We're not asking for perfect leaders. We're asking for growing leaders. So I'm trusting that whatever leadership level we are in, by, by tomorrow evening, there would have been a positive shift in the name of Jesus Christ. You'll be wiser, you'll be more um, you know, effective as a leader because the leader is the door. Whatever you open the people to is what they will experience. And the things you've not opened them to most likely is a function of level of understanding that you don't even know that um, that exists. So people are lifted or stagnated by our leadership. A servant is not above his master. Leadership development or leadership improvement is therefore a must if we are to see people, organizations, or even nations rise. In Nigeria, what we've experienced in the last eight years is a validation of the principle of leadership. Better leaders make for better nations because leaders make decisions. And the decisions made by the leader is binding on the lead. So when our president and the cabinet, when they make any decision, is binding on Nigerians, whether you like it or not. So the, the, the question is, what kind, of lead, what kind of decisions are you making as a father? 
or as a mother, as a parent, as a pastor, as an evangelist. Because the quality of that decision determines how far people can go. So we are saying, okay, we want to repair our heads by the word, by the, by the word of God so we can make better decisions and have better outcomes. It's my prayer that 2023 will be far more glorious than 2022 in the name of Jesus Christ. So the MLF is desi designed by God to help leaders develop themselves for greater output, greater impact, greater exploit. We have various sessions. Now we cover a lot of grounds. Uh, two days, 9 to like 3, 3.30 p.m. Uh, ministry, leadership development, emotional health, even governance. There's a session tomorrow on governance. You know, we have our elections in Nigeria. If you're joining us from Canada or, or from the West, uh, Nigeria will be having the elec our, our elections in f this month of February. So there's a session on just enlightening us as leaders on how to um, lead our people aright in that sense. So just a short session tomorrow on governance. And then we have very powerful syndicate sessions tomorrow that covers developing ministry structure, assimilation. Uh, most pastors have challenges with assimilation. Many have fantastic outreaches where, you know, go to evangelism efforts, evangelistic efforts, and then people come in but how do we retain them? Retention and assimilation is a lot of work so that we can close the back door of the church. Not that uh, 100 people come in fresh. Oh, thank you, God. They, they came through evangelistic efforts, and then out of that 100, another 75 just left the church after one month. There has to be proper retention process. So there's a syndicate session on that, junior church, and then creatives for ministry. Uh, if, you're, if you're pastoring this generation, the creative part of your ministry needs attention uh, because of the new generation that we are ministering to, sight and sound. How creative can we be in expressing the, uh, the gospel of, of, of Christ? You know, there are many creative ways in drama, in songs, uh, and in, in, in music, many, many powerful creatives, creative ways we can do that. So there's a session on that tomorrow. And then we're going to have a lot of Q&A sessions. Uh, today I'll be doing a Q&A with Press Forward on marriage, on parenting, on, and then dealing with stress. Very powerful. Uh, let's watch out for that. And I also want to encourage that we invest in resources. Two days is powerful. That's so great, but much more the things we can learn. There are resources from our ministry, powerful uh, books and CDs, um, USB, you know, all those resources available for us to uh, acquire with our resources. Buy the truth and sell it not. And listen again and again and, and, and build. I want to encourage that we be responsible in the next two days. You're here for business, face while you're here. If your eyes be single, your body will be full of light. There should be focus. Um, and then, like Bishop Edipo said to me many years ago, you will not be able to ask me all the questions you want to ask me, but learn to observe. Just observe. How did Solomon get wiser? By observation. Thank God for the software of wisdom. But there's something about observing. How did, how did Solomon know about the ant? He must have been in the palace and just looking and watching for Years and then came up with some powerful outcomes, you know. So observe, observe things, observe people. Uh, and you learn a lot uh, with that and then be determined to make the best out of the conference. Praise the Lord. Somebody put your hands together for Jesus. Okay, um, let me just run through some slides, uh, like foundational stuff that I think would really, really help us as um, leaders. Uh, I want to share some things that I believe will really um, bless us uh, and I think we will add value to us as much as possible. Hunger. I always want to encourage leaders to remain hungry regardless of your age, regardless of the results you've seen or not seen. Hunger is the birthplace for answers. I can't help a leader that's not hungry anymore. You might not even know all the answers. You might not even know what it takes for anything to happen, but just remain hungry for more. 
This hunger has to be there forever. God cannot even do anything when you are not hungry. I, I've, I've always said that most people that had notable miracles in scriptures were individuals that were hungry enough. Jesus, I don't think Jesus leaves his house and then in his mind is saying, okay, today I will heal the woman with the issue of blood. Uh, today I will heal Bartimaeus. I believe Jesus leaves the house with um, the anointing to heal, to deliver. Now you now put your name on the list with your hunger. So if, as it's moving around, the hungry blind man will get his miracle. The woman with the issue of blood that is hungry enough to break protocol will get her own miracle. So I believe every generation is crafted by the hungry. Those who are hungry enough to impact their world. Never allow challenges or whatever situation you are going through keep you down. As I'm giving, you can't give up. The hunger must be perpetual. Proverbs, I think, 27, verse 17. To the hungry soul, every bitter thing is sweet. Proverbs 27. Is it 17 or 7? It says, um, um, to the hungry soul, uh, hungry soul. Because the things we need to do, it said a satisfied, a satisfied soul loads the honeycomb. Loads mean he's satisfied even when he says honey. I don't need this. He said, but a hungry soul, every bitter thing is sweet. I submit to us, for ministry to work, for business to work, for things, marriage to work, there's, you have a lot of work to do that is bitter to the lazy. But this scripture is saying, when you are hungry, it converts the pain into something you enjoy doing. So when they say, ah, you have to pray some more, yeah, you have to do administration, administration like this, you are so hungry that you are ready to do it. But if there is no hunger, it will be bitter, it will be painful, and you will drop it. There has to be hunger. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will bath that hunger in us afresh in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that the Holy Ghost will fuel fresh hunger in our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Hunger attracts answers. It, it, you don't have to know what it takes to have a breakthrough in ministry or a turnaround in life. But when you are hungry for it to happen, you'll be pulling the answers to yourself. Maybe that's why you came for this conference anyway. That I, I need to know what to do next. Well, I, I, I don't know, but I need to know. Now the hunger will be pulling the answers to you. And I pray that you will find your answers these two days in the name of Jesus Christ. Just one statement from one of the sessions. Just one illustration. Maybe just one verse can be the miracle that you need. Do you know you have to also pray for hunger? Oh, especially when you have seen some measure of success in ministry. You have to pray for it. The Holy Spirit insatiable hunger to be useful in your hands because you can't remain relevant if you are not hungry. When you arrive, you have arrived. And then number two is humility. Humility. Pride is an enemy of wisdom. Pride is an enemy of wisdom. Armed with all, armed with humility, anyone can learn from anyone, from anywhere, from any place. 2021, that's about two years ago, Bishop Wedebo came here to visit us and pray over the dome just before we finished. And he went round, you know, of course, I was a bit shy, you know, when your pastor or spiritual father comes around like that, so I was trying to tidy up everything, you know, let's arrange this one, you know, ah, God, let me pass, you know, and then when he got home, in the evening he called, <laughs> I was about to ask that, are there areas he would love us to improve on from his observation, I was about to say that, he now said, ah, I learned some things today from your place, I thought this is a he said, yes, I learned some things. He was not describing some things he saw in the junior church. And some arrangement, and some of the people around me, I was shocked. Ah, you were learning from us. We were trying to tidy up so that you can give us pass mark. In that sense. Armed with enough humility 
Anyone can learn from anyone, from anywhere. The challenge with Africa is we assume age is wisdom. When I say age, it's not just the chronological uh, dimension of humans, even age of ministry. So a ministry can be 25 years, and God will require them to learn something from a five-year-old ministry. There's this mentality that uh, if we are 25 years, the five years should be learning from us. If you have that dimension, the five-year-old will meet up with you and overtake you. And for, some people believe that because I'm 40, 45 or 55, uh, all the younger ministries must learn from us. It's dangerous. So you shut down the flow of wisdom. In fact, I realized that the younger ones teach you more. Even in our home, our young children, we learn a lot from them. Our teenagers, we have two teenagers. There are many things I struggle with at times. They say, Daddy. And they collect the device from you or something, even dressing. Amen. Amen. There was a day I was, I was dressed up as I was about living. One of my daughters said, Daddy, go, 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 go. No, 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 no. I said, what happened? <laughs> she said, let's go upstairs. And then we went. I was pointing this, this. I said, okay, it's fine, Abby. Yes, this is better, Daddy. Don't be so set in your ways that you hinder your ministry. You hinder your family. For instance, parenting in our age is different from that of our parents' own. When we are growing up, <laughs> when they say sit down, you sit down. You don't even know why, you sit down. When they say don't do this one, you just obey. But we have a new generation that will ask you, why should I sit down? <laughs> one parent was telling me that he had to give a law in his family that the question was only two. <laughs> I'm telling you, I was shocked. Like, because the, the child will be asking, okay, why should I sit down? When you now answer that one, I say, Why? So I have to give you a lot. Only two. Only two. Because you'd be saying, why, 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 why? So the thing is, we have to be ready with answers for them. Things are changing. But with pride, you won't learn. I was studying the book of Joshua. And I realized that God said to Joshua, you're going to do like Moses did. You're going to... <laughs> Joshua was just looking at God. <laughs> So if you look at Joshua chapter 1, God had to keep repeating, only be what? Bold. Yeah, he had to tell it because Moses saw you face to face. Moses fasted, is it 80 days? Ah, Moses divided the Red Sea. If it was Aaron, okay, Aaron saw the miracles. Aaron was with him, but me, I'm just helping you out and I'm going to step into your shoes. Ah, God told him, be strong and courageous. As I was with Moses, I will be with you. And God said, look at it. I never gave Joshua a rod. I never. I yet he divided the Jordan. So be careful what you're expecting. He never did that. I'm not even sure Joshua fasted like him, like Moses, in that sense. There are many dimensions in Joshua's life that wasn't like that of Moses, yet he was to do as much as Moses. The same thing about Peter. I've said it several where I'm just imagining Jesus walking on water. The master walking on water. And then the disciples saw him. Of course, your assumption is, ah, uh, only the master can walk on water, isn't it? Why? Ah, uh, he came from heaven. He's the Lord of lords. He has power over the elements. We will just be watching. But somebody was very bold. Peter said, if it is you, bid me come. And I began to look at our generation. If we were in the shoes of Jesus, and then Peter was telling you, I want to come. What would you say to Peter? You, Peter. When did you start ministry? Ha, on water. Ah, no, no, no. That dimension, you're not, you're not, you never reached there. Because your mindset would have been perhaps, ah, see 40 days fasting and day and night, uh, transfiguration, all those things put together is the reason you are working on water. But many of the things you did accrues a lot to the account of Peter. That's a dimension we must understand. Jesus never told him that. He said, come, you can do it too. So there are many things that happen in, uh, old, in the older generation that God wants to do now, even much more. But the methods will change. The dimensions will change. The mindset has to change. And yet, there will be great impact and outcomes. 
But it takes humility to learn. I listen a lot to our younger folks in church now. A lot. You know why? As you hit 40 and above, you will unconsciously be set in your ways. And it's understandable. But many of the younger people, 24s, 14s, they don't have all your baggage. Oh, they don't have it. If you know how many things you, you are carrying, the wahala of military regimes, the growing up, many of us grew up when our parents didn't have enough resources. So there's, they, like, there's some limitations in your mind about resources, the management of food, all those things. But they came with some of, without those things, so they think free. So it's easier for God to push ideas to them. And they will receive it. Your own as it's coming. No, ah, in 1989, we suffer more than that. It can't come. I'm telling you, it's an unconscious thing. You just have those things in your mind. The beatings you received. You know, some parents beat us not because we were wrong, but because there was hunger in the family. When there's no money, when there is little thing. I go beat you. <laughs> you, you. You notice at times there's a difference between the first child and the last child. Most of the time, the first child faced that brunt. The, the beginning of the marriage, the, the fights, the reactions. It just be, uh. But that last child came when money has come in. I cannot tell pancake, mommy. <laughs> pancake. Pancake. <laughs> when I look at our children, I just laugh. Pancake. I now finish the pancake. You know, here, I don't want pancake anymore. Sometimes I feel like doing some, you know, table tennis, you know. <laughs> you don't want pancake anymore. After mommy has done this, but when I was growing up, I didn't take one pancake. Pancake. I didn't even know it existed. <clears throat> we were eating a, a bar. What's a bar in English? <laughs> What's a bar in English, people of God? For those watching online, please. A bar is a bar. A bar. Swallow. Every, almost every night. With a four. Vegetable. And that four, you will be so excited when you... When, you, when they serve you, when you get your portion, you see something that looks brownish. And you assume it's protein, you know, like meat. Unknown to you, it's a thicker part of the vegetable. <laughs> you know, put it, you know, you get it into your mouth, you're expectant, you know, and then you crush it, it's the same vegetable. <laughs> That's how we grow up. As I say, we, don't, we hardly take pap in our home. She enjoys pap. Um, I, I, <laughs> I was papped. <laughs> ah! Not pampered, papped. Every day. Then with cocoa, you know. And I went to the boarding house again. And then they papered. Not pampered. <laughs> Remove the M. So when I got married, the first day I saw pap, the way I reacted, like it represented poverty. <laughs> that's, I mean, and, and that's not it. She enjoys it, put milk, you know. But at a distance, she knows that, you know, just... Because you carry a lot of baggage growing up. But the younger person that didn't even know those things can receive fresh ideas. So let's listen to them. Let's learn. With humility, any leader can learn from anyone. Praise God. Now let me, let me dig deeper into that. Do you realize that Nicodemus was like a pastor like Jesus? Who started ministry? Jesus or Nicodemus? That was why the Pharisees were reacting. When the crowd was following him, because them, they would dress all up and the temple would be empty. But Nicodemus was humble enough to visit him in the night. You will need such visits to people. Nicodemus lay. He went to Jesus and said, ah! No, 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 how can somebody do all these things? I've been here before you. And what shocked me is, you know, we say people should get born again. We pray to people. Do you know that statement came from that questioning? That quest. Jesus never spoke about being born again to the, you know, to the Beatitudes or in a neutral. No, it came from that particular situation. Just that Nicodemus asking that, I want to do the same thing. You know, except a man be born again. Or is it Jethro and Moses? Because the reason why many people have spiritual pride is their spiritual experiences. So they just feel that yeah, I don't need those things. Moses met God face to face. Moses heard from God. Or even like saw God. And then you find a man, his in-law, that was not really a covenant man. They call him Jethro. 
He was not the one teaching him administration. If you are in Moses' shoes, your spiritual pride will chase the man away. You will start saying something. No, no, no. God will speak to me about that kind of thing. When I, I'm ready, you speak to me. And God, because God wrote on iPad, oh, sorry, on a tablet now. Yes. That's the first iPad. There's nothing new under the sun. God wrote commandments. So why didn't God write the 11th commandment? And thou shalt divide the people into groups. Why didn't God do that? That means there are many things you will not hear in your prayer room, in your private study, that God will put in people you might not like. People that are younger than you are, or you might not like their style. And if you don't learn it from them, your life will show it. So that humility thing covers many grounds. Sometimes I come from your own child. Sometimes from your own spouse. Yeah, we are the head of the family as men. Glory to Jesus. At times it can come from your spouse. I'm saying this because there are answers coming your uh, way this year. But some of those answers uh, are already domiciled in locations that only humility can fetch it out. Pride is an enemy of wisdom. God gives more grace to the humble and he resists the proud. Okay, and then let's talk about breaking the fallow ground. I think I'll close with that. Breaking the fallow ground. Uh, when the pandemic showed up, you know, especially for those of us in Lagos, where all kinds of stuff, church was locked down for like seven or nine, almost seven months. I've never experienced that kind of thing in my life. Where churches were closed down and then we were doing services and then government officials would come. It was, it was very, you know. <laughs> one day, government officials came around here. Thank God one of our members was part of the officials. And I came to see me as a pastor. They are here. I said, where are they? He said, we. Where are you? We. They sent us. And so go and tell you the many people that is joined the service. You know. He said, they are going around. They will go and call police, you know. But after the pandemic, I realized that people, people needed to break the fallow ground afresh. Afresh. And I want us to approach our ministries, or even businesses like that, that we need to till the ground afresh. Fresh oil for retaking territories or claiming new territories as the Holy Ghost guides us. There are two areas uh, I, I, I recommend, heart and earth. Ha, uh, earth, E-A-R-T-H, earth, and then the heart. When you're praying, I'm breaking the follow. And maybe you're here, you're just starting a church, starting a ministry. This will help you a whole lot. Prayers. We, we prayed for almost two years before this church started. Fasting and praying. The team that graduated from IFE with me, we had, they had portfolios. Uh, I remember Pastor Bimbo, then our portfolio, I think it was the Junior Church and Signs and Wonders, where you have a, a portfolio where you develop content on how you think the Junior Church and the Signs and Wonders will be in that ministry. And you develop, you know, some files on that. And when you are fasting, your own prayer is that day, Lord, this ministry... Let the junior church continue to have impact. Let there be signs and wonders forever. Somebody else had properties. And that person had conferences. Different parts. All the fires are still in my office. So your own day of fasting. Oh Lord, this ministry, global impact starting. All the conferences we will do till you come. Guide us. Let it be impactful. I'm sure they prayed about this one then. And then when we have our meetings and gather, everybody now do a presentation on their own portfolio. <laughs> I remember those meetings. It was, it was a bit funny, you know. Just speaking lofty things. And somebody comes up, okay, praise the Lord. My portfolio is uh, properties for global impact ministries. And then bring out two or three scriptures that talked about the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. And these are the things we are saying. And then we pray with that for one and a half years, two years. That foundational prayers is helping. But I believe that after the pandemic, people need to do those things again. To break the fallow ground. So if you're pastoring in um, Etios and local government or K2, you need to break it afresh. Psalms 2 verse 8. Ask of me. Ask. Somebody say ask. 
Okay, ask, that's praying. Ask, ask. Be bold enough to ask me for your territories. Be bold enough. He said, ask of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance. The nations. So God can give people what? Nations. If he sends you there. So if you're in Yanokbaja or you are in Kosovo local government, I mean, we were praying during our New Year prayer gathering and I brought the map of Lagos State and we had to be speaking to local governments afresh. It is a local government. It could do local government. This local government. And speak. Ask of me. Ask me and be specific. If you are sent to Spain or you are in Canada or a part of United Kingdom or United Kingdom, ask, ask. He said, we'll give it to you. Ask him for the wisdom. Ask him for strength. Ask him for resources. Break the fallow ground afresh. A Papa local government, a Korodu local government, Badagri local government, wherever you are sent to, ask afresh. Give me the city for your glory. Break the fallow ground. And if you're a businessman, you can do the same thing for your market share, for your territory. Glory to God. And then I love Acts chapter 16, verse 14. So the earth and then the hearts. Until God opens the heart of the people, we are not set. We are not set. If God has opened their heart, they won't respond to the handbills. They won't respond to the billboards. But they can be angry with the handbill and tear it in your presence. But when God has opened their heart, the response will be better. Look at this scripture. Praise the Lord. Now a certain woman named Lydia had us. She was a seller of purple from the city of Thyatira who worshipped God. The Lord opened our are you there this morning? Who opened our heart? Who opened our heart? So God opens people's hearts. He can open the heart of a million people, 100,000 people, 50,000. We need to pray this prayer over our cities again. The pandemic came and shut the door of some people's heart. I, I was uh, in the U.S. Uh, last year, and I, I heard and saw people that used to go to church and stopped going to church. The same thing in Canada. A lot in the United Kingdom. Many have been disoriented. Things came and distracted them. Now we have to pray their hearts back. Now this is important so that all our efforts at reaching out to people, encouraging people, can now make more meaning. <laughs> Who worship God? The Lord opened our heart to heed the things spoken by Paul. You also need this when you are preaching on Sunday morning or midweek service. Where... Yes, you are prepared to preach, but can, is their heart open to receive? It is in the receiving that we experience great um, impact. Look at verse 15. I, I love this. Look at verse 15. Acts 16, 15. Now she was, God opened her heart and see what happened next. And when she and Aha, also suddenly the open one, open heart has now led to family rescue, were baptized. Oh, she begged us, not that we begged her. I realized that when we don't pray adequately for their hearts to be open, we will be literally forcing people to give, to be workers, to be committed. This is someone that is now asking them, you must eat in my house. You know, two different things. When a pastor is the one forcing somebody, hey, can I come and visit you people? I want to eat in your house. Now, she was the one that was constraining them. She was begging them, Paul, you and your team, come and... That means this kind of woman, if there's a project in church, she will give. Because God opened her heart. It wasn't Paul that was begging her. That, uh, see, the meeting finished very late. Uh, Madam, I know God has taught you today. Can we stay in your house? She was the one that was begging. She begged us, saying... If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come to my house and... So she persuaded us. You look at the difference. So some ministries, people are being forced to give. Uh, they must serve. We need more workers. And another ministry, people are ready to become workers. They're ready to serve. They're even going beyond what they are asked for. When God opens their heart. But we pray for them. So we pray for the earth. When you are praying over the earth, you break governmental controls in the realm of the spirit. You deal with all those principalities in the realm of the spirit. I believe that in the realm of the spirit, they know ministries. Oh, yes. So, you say, Paul, I know. Uh, this one I know. Who are you? That's why fasting comes in and consecration. The moment a ministry is able to break the fallow ground of that place, 
Even demons allow people to go to that church. So when people are going, where are you going? Uh, global empire. Okay, okay, okay. We know global empire. We know reading. We know winners. We know that one. And, and that name, if, and that name is mentioned. You say you can't go there. We don't know that. <laughs> God forbid. Yeah, that, that happens. So you find out when you're broken that fallow ground, effectively, resources flow unhindered. People flow unhindered. And growth flows unhindered. And then we pray for the heart of the people. I know many of us know this already, but I'm saying this um, for us to do it like we are starting. Approach the work in that manner, like we are just starting. Praise the Lord. And then let's close from vision boost, I mean, renewed vision. Renewed vision. It's, it's almost the same thing as breaking the fallow ground. We need to see afresh. We need to see again. We need to see further, to go further. As far as your eyes can see, you can possess. One man's ceiling is another man's foundation. You cannot do more than your mind can comprehend. We need to see your uh, ministries, our businesses cannot go beyond what we can see. Glory to God. We need to see further, to go further. As far as your eyes can see, you can possess one man's sin and another man's foundation. You cannot do more than your mind can comprehend. The mind is the designing room where destiny de designs are made. A leader is the door. Whatever you open is what people will experience in family, business, nation, ministries. But you won't open the door to a particular realm if you've not seen it. Uh, and seeing is for leadership. One day, Bishop Edepo called me just recently. He said, okay, look at your head. I said, yes, sir. He said, where is your eyes? He said, on your head. Your ears, on your head. Your nose, on your head. Is it on your neck? He said, no. So, to see, on the head. To hear, on the head. To perceive, on the head. And he said, the neck can never do the work of the head. The neck is supposed to provide support, adequate support. But the moment you don't understand that, if the neck begins to try to see, the ministry will have problems. Because it's not given to see. So Moses will go on the mountain and worship and pray. And then from what he has received, he tells everybody. So leadership for families, ministries, you need to see vision. And God wants to renew your vision or boost it so you can see the new realms. As far as your eyes can see, you can possess. I pray against spiritual blindness today. I pray that God will heal our eyes. Our inner eyes. Let's just look briefly at uh, vision boosters. Vision boosters. What helps me to see? You know, sometimes when something is not okay, you boost it so it can be clearer. Number one, as simple as it is, is prayers. Call to me. One version says, call to me, and I will answer you. And I will do what? Show. Many things that you are looking for, God wants to show you like a cinema. Lord, I want to take this work to another level. Open my eyes. To know what to do. And I believe these two days, God will show us things in Jesus' name. You will just see. He said, come to me and I will answer you and show you not ordinary things. I will show you what? Great and mighty things which you did not see. Ah, this other one. I pray we understand it. Exposure. I'm not sure I'll be where I am today without exposure. You have to go. You have to visit places. Eh, you don't know. <laughs> you know, we've been growing as a church, and I thank God for it. One day I went to Kenan Lamb for a meeting, and it was Shiloh. And there's a choir to stand up. That was many years ago. As the choir stood up, I said, ah, this is an entire church. Oh. This is an entire church. You'll be humble. That's the choir. They rose up, say, everything here is our two services then. 
it creates a hunger in you to do more. You need to go to places. I want to encourage pastors to, as God helps you to travel, most of my journeys outside Nigeria is not to preach. Preaching maybe is 5%. 95 is for trainings. To see. You will hear things you don't hear in your dimension. And you will see things. When I go to those trainings, after some sessions, I walk around. And you see things. Wow. There was a ministry I went to and I saw how they helped the poor. Oh, amazing. People donate cars to help single mothers. You understand that kind of stuff? And the mechanics in the church will repair those cars. And then they, they said something. Ah, we taught me that. When you are picking anything and that is a care center, you pay one dollar. So when you are picking clothes for your children, you pay one dollar. And they said the reason is so when you get home, you don't say, church, dashed me. You tell your child, I bought this for you. It's dignifying, isn't it? I love that. Instead of saying, ah, a church gave us, it don't look like we're a poor family. It's not, it's not, maybe you can accept that as a parent, but what about the child that's just coming up? The mindset. So you buy a car for one, one dollar. Ah, I just bought this car from the church or whatever. Oh, you bought it. The child thinks differently. They have lawyers that help people. So you need to travel sometimes on YouTube and see. You see some places before you go there. There are better ways to do what you are doing if you can see. If you can see. If you can see. I see ministries, how they do communion service. Thousands of people gather and under five minutes is done. We have to learn from that. If you don't learn from that, just yourself, people lining up to take communion, just to take communion. And then before they even eat it, they, they died on the line. And then there's communion to raise them up. <laughs> just be disorganized. Just to learn how they handle time. Service greed. There are many things you don't know that people have gone far. No nation waits for other nations that don't know anything. I thought America would just delay and say, Nigeria is slowing down, let's wait for them. I thought, I thought that, 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 the world doesn't run like that. Things are happening daily. So we have to, as it were, catch up. And it takes a hunger for that to happen to you. You need to travel. I, I, I am challenging you. Don't live your life in your locality till death. It's, it's, it's not okay. How did you get to heaven and then God is talking to you about this creation and say, where did you go to? How did you enjoy my earth? So I was in Okokomaiko. Uh, and I was in uh, Okitipupa. In all my creation, that's what you saw. I, Father, I, I went to Benin too. <laughs> there is Singapore. Eh? There is Hong Kong. There is China. Many of us believe that prayer must always be like this, Abby. You believe so, which is not bad. Father, say, when a Chinese man is praying, you would think he's not praying. And yet God answers them. But your own mind is, ah, until I break the neck. Which is not bad. That's your culture kind. But a Chinese man will not worship the way you worship. We are very vibrant and boisterous in Africa. But that's because so when you understand those dimensions, it helps you a lot in your thinking. There are mental barriers that we have created, not because, you know, just your culture. They are not scriptural. It's not in the Bible. Just erected it in your mind. That this is how somebody should get married. This is how, no, no. Is that scriptural or just your culture? Tell your neighbor, travel, travel, travel. Tell them, travel, travel this year. Somebody's answering you, I don't get money, I don't get money. It's not money they used to travel, it's vision. Provision. When there's a vision to see things, the resources to make it happen will show up. Let's be part of your goals. There's some ministries in your nation that you need to travel to sit down and attend their conferences. Sometimes, even their Sunday service, I've done that several where you leave church on Sunday and go and sit in that church. In the congregation, of course, it's harder now for me. I tried that one day and then they allowed me to rest. You know, to see, to see how they do it. Sometimes the best of ministries are shown on Sunday, you understand? The full blast of their systems on Sunday morning. So you sit down at the back and look at, and look at this. Go to the toilet, go to this place. You write a lot of things down. You are a different person. Books help you to travel. Reading books. I was reading a book about a church that moved to a new place in the U.S. And they developed their junior church in such a way that kids love to come to church. 
One of their classes is like a plane. I mean, I saw the picture, a whole plane. The kids, that particular class, they will enter the plane and sit like passengers. And their teachers dress like hair hostess and pilots. The kids will always tell their parents, we are going to church on Sunday. One of their classes was Sesame, Sesame Street, was Sesame Street, all those things, teaching them the word of God. So their junior church became one of the major things in that city. So when we moved to the good land several years ago, we, I, I, I went to Dubai and bought all these, you know, slides and everything. And then we had it there. I would just notice that, okay, because we're in through, Larry, to move here was a lot of work. But when the kids saw that after the class, I will have this enjoyment. Many parents will tell you, on Friday, mommy, Sunday, good land. We still have it till now. There was a lady that came to do some repairs here at the good land. So it was on the weekday. I think the kid was um, on midterm break. So she brought her daughter. So the daughter was playing in the junior church, having a nice time. She was doing her job. And they got home on that, maybe on a Thursday or Friday. Then on Sunday morning, the husband didn't know what happened. On Sunday morning, the child now said, Mommy, we are going to that place. He said, where? That place now. They thought it was a joke. He said, when they entered the vehicle, she now started shouting, I'm not going! That's to their... <laughs> it was very funny. They, she was hitting the chairs. I'm not going. The was one asking, where did you go? Ah, it's good land. He had to come and drop mommy and child here. When a child goes to church, it's a good thing, isn't it? Or wants to go to church. So read books. When, when you are praying in your prayer room and you are hitting your head like this, the answer might be in the book, your ogo is hitting. What's ogo in English? Eh? Ogo. <laughs> and your father, turn it around. Hey, turn it around. You can do it. And your head is hitting your guitar's book. So the Holy Spirit said, turn around, turn around. You now read it. The answer is in chapter 4. But start from chapter 1 and read it. Exposure. He said, I will fetch my knowledge from my father.